at the Salado Wildlife Education Center here in Frankfort, Kentucky, which got all kinds of cool stuff. But we have somebody here who has taken the place of an older eagle who passed. And a lot of these, sure. lot of these eagles can live in captivity for 20, 30 years. Yeah, well, the oldest on record lived close to 50 years. There's been wow. a couple that lived close to 50 years. So uh, quite a while. And even in the wild, the, the average lifespan is, is about 20 years. Wow. So they're a long-lived bird. One of the things about the Salado Center right here in Frankfort, Kentucky, it's, a, it's informational. You can go from one station to the next. There's so much to see here. And it's really, I think, one of the most underutilized places to bring kids or adults. What are your, first of all, what are your visiting times and hours through through the season? We're open Tuesday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. and Saturdays, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Is it seasonal? We are open, uh, typically we open in March, the beginning of March, and we close the day before Thanksgiving. Okay. So our season is, is pretty long and that we're open. We are closed Sundays and Mondays and all state holidays. Now we're here to talk about the eagle, but what else might you see here if you travel? You know, we've got a lot of exhibits, uh, smaller things like snakes, frogs, turtles, and fish, and then outdoors. So we have much larger enclosures with larger animals like the, the bald eagle, uh, a black bear, bobcat, elk, bison, deer, turkey, quail. So we, we've got a lot to look at. Wow, what's new? What's the newest? Well, we're looking at it. We didn't capture this bird. Tell us how he got here. Uh, he's injured, uh, what we call permanently non-releasable due to injury. And uh, we don't know exactly what happened to him, but uh, he suffered a wing fracture. So he's got a broken, broken bone in one of his wings and so he can't fly anymore. And the rehab facility out in uh, Cody, Wyoming, which is where he's from, uh, deemed him non-releasable. And then when that happens, these birds come up for placement at wildlife centers and zoos like this. And uh, we were very fortunate uh, that we were able to get him. He'll help us educate our visitors and, and it'll give our visitors a great opportunity to see one of these uh, beautiful birds up close. Okay, let's get educated. Let's talk about education. Sure. The whole reason for this center is that. Let's talk about a juvenile bald eagle as opposed to an adult. Sure. What are the differences and how can you tell? Most people when they imagine a bald eagle, they imagine uh, a bright white head and a bright white tail and a really yellow beak. Mm -hmm. And uh, that doesn't happen until they're about five years old. Uh, male and female. Yes, correct. The male and female are colored identical. Uh, the only difference, uh, an obvious difference is size, where with all raptors, females are larger. Until they reach five years old, uh, which is uh, sexual maturity is, is what that is, the, the milestone that they're reaching. They go through a, a series of color morphs and uh, most of it, is very similar to what you're seeing right now, brown with some white mottled throughout. A lot of people may have seen a juvenile bald eagle and had no idea what they were looking at. They might have, if they didn't get a great look, they might have thought they were looking at a, a large hawk or a vulture even, or maybe even a golden eagle. Now, what's the difference? If, are there any obvious differences where you can tell a golden eagle from a juvenile? Uh, one of the most obvious differences would be that golden eagles have a gold or a blonde color on their nape on the back of their head, and even the juvenile bald eagles will not have that. You know, when I was a kid, uh, growing up around Maysville on the river, occasionally, very occasionally, there would be a sighting of a bald eagle. Mm -hmm. Hardly ever, and it was, you know, it might end up in the paper. What's mm -hmm. happened in the last 30, 40 years where these things were, we worried if they were, on, they were on the brink of extinction. What happened uh, that they have come back? Well, probably the first step was banning DDT, which was a pesticide which caused a lot of uh, decline in numbers of not just bald eagles, but peregrine falcons and a lot of other raptors as well. Uh, banned that in 1972, and then a national reintroduction effort that took place in the, in the uh, late 70s and 80s, including uh, hacking, which is reintroducing uh, young eagles. That happened in Kentucky and Land Between the Lakes. Uh, thanks to that effort, and of course protection, uh, they are protected not only by uh, the Migratory Bird Treaty Act, they also have their own uh, act called the Bald and Golden Eagle Act that takes it a step further, prevents you from being able to harass them during the nesting season and things like that. Uh, they've really come back in big ways. Uh, think about it, in 1986, we had one nesting pair wow. in Kentucky. As of last year, we had 131. So we really have more bald eagles in Kentucky now than it, ever in any other point in history since we've been keeping track. It's very likely that any county in Kentucky, sure. you could see a bald eagle. If you've got a, a sizable body of water, uh, you might have a, a pair that could nest there, but keep in mind too that during migration, they, they, they'll stop along farm ponds and, yeah. and creeks just to hang out for the day and maybe refuel if you want to think of it that way. So yeah, it would not be uncommon really probably in any county at some point through the year to see a bald eagle. 
Yes. All right. If somebody's watching this right now, a teacher's saying, how can I, how can we bring our kids over here? What's a good way to get a hold of you? What's a good way to schedule uh, a tour? You, you can call us. Uh, you can go on our website, actually, and, and set up a field trip yourself if you want to do that. If you go to fw.ky.gov and you click on education, we're the first thing that pops up. You just click on the Salado Wildlife Center uh, and it kind of guides you through how to set up a field trip. You can always call us. Uh, at 502-564-7863, uh, and we can help you if that's something that you're interested in. And if they come here to take a tour, what can they expect? Will somebody walk with them? Are there interactive tours? or, or uh, Most of our tours are self-guided, meaning that you're going to come through at your own leisure and look at things at your own pace. Uh, you can schedule educational programs, which are, which are more formal, sit-down presentations that last about 40 minutes. If you're interested in those, you do have to schedule those ahead of time. We do those on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. And again, if, if you're interested in that, you can always call us to set one of those up. If I call you, will you take me on a, on a, a guided tour? I'll take you on a guided tour. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. <laughs> you bet.